Hey guys, it's Ornlu, and hello! Dawn of the Dukes is apparently going to be upon us on August 10th, 2021, which is five days after uh, I'm recording this. We also got some uh, information with the new sibs that I wanted to go through with you, and don't worry, I'll be making more uh, complete guides to the sibs once uh, the DLC drops, but we still got some more information, and I'm sure a lot of you would want to see that, so we're just going to make this video real quick so we can go through it with the new info. Um, but yeah, let's see. You got it. expansions and two new civs. We knew this. Central and Eastern Europe with the campaigns and then the achievements and stuff. New civs. The Poles. Now, we already knew that this was going to be one of the two new civs. Got a nice little picture here. We also see their emblem with the, uh, the eagle. Makes sense. Anyway, the Poles are a cavalry civilization. While their western neighbors employed deadly companies of heavily armored cavalry, the Poles leveraged their strengths to evolve more towards what modern eyes might class as medium cavalry. While they could not always triumph over their rival counterparts on an individual basis, they emphasized maneuverability, organization, and sheer numbers at a time when warfare was shifting away from typical medieval model and stuff. Now, we don't have the bonuses or the tech tree, but we do have the unique units building and technologies. So the unique unit for the, pole, the Poles is the Obuch, Obuk, uh, a brutal infantryman whose warhammer tears the armor from enemy units. Obuks are best used against expensive, heavily armored units that might otherwise pose a threat to the rest of your army. So, what does this mean? Now, we don't have all the stats and stuff like that yet, but tears the armor away from enemy units obviously sounds like, okay, you're going to be removing the armor from units. Doesn't say if it's just going to be melee armor or pierce armor, because if it's melee armor, it's if it's just melee armor, then it's not really that great of an ability because most units in the game don't have that much melee armor. I mean, as far as land units go, you really just have uh, Teutonic Knights and Boyars that have a base melee armor of more than two. But still, you know, I mean, it's like do a little bit more damage each time. But if it also removes pierce armor then if you have, like, a bunch of these guys in the front and some archers behind, you're just going to start shredding through armies, uh, you know, really, really fast. So it could be really good. Um, also doesn't say how long the armor removal will last. Um, is it going to be just on a short timer, or is it going to be, uh, you know, permanent? Obviously, that is something we'll need to consider uh, on Tuesday and test out. And don't worry, I'll be doing plenty of testing. Uh, next, we have the Winged Hussar. I mean, can't really have Poles without the Winged Hussars. Uh, but the Poles will also share a regional unit with the Lithuanians, their partners in their late medieval commonwealth. This unit, the Winged Hussar, is a powerful upgrade to the Light Cavalry that replaces the Hussar upgrade that many other civs have. So, Lithuanians get a uh, the Winged Hussar as well as Poles. Yeah, that would that's going to be really, really strong for Lithuanians. So let, let's see how that pans out. But with Poles... You know, you've got, uh, yeah, good Hussars, it kind of makes sense. You don't really know how good their uh, knights are going to be and all that. Uh, we have, and I'll get to this in a second, but late game, I'm sure winged Hussars are just going to be, you know, better versions of Hussars in the same way that Imp Skirms and Imp Camels are better versions of their respective units. Um, it's really good for the Civ that it's not an additional upgrade on top of Hussar, because that would be, like, insanely expensive, but it's going to be replacing Hussar. So it's going to be much easier to get to, I think, um, than, say, Imp Camel. Uh, next, we have a unique building. It's one of those areas, I think, that there's actually a fair amount of, uh, design space in Age of Empires, but we have the full work. Uh, additionally, the Poles have a unique building, the Full Work, which replaces the mill and increases the efficiency of nearby farms. Oh, also, someone, ju someone just followed. Isn't that lovely? I always forget to turn that off. Lol. Um, anyway, uh, it's not saying exactly what this means. Now, if it increases the efficiency of nearby farms, I feel like it's going to have to do something other than just be like, okay farms around the full work are x percent faster just because we already have so many of those bonuses in the game i mean we have uh slavs who will all of their farms work 10 percent faster so if this is a you know flat farming bonus it's going to need to be at least like 15 percent to you know make up for the fact that slavs have just 10 percent on all their farms um or it's going to have to be something else i'm not too sure exactly how that's going to uh pan out but we shall see uh, and it's going to be interesting for sure. And we also saw the uh, the full work in some of the screenshots. 
Uh, is it in this screenshot? Uh, yeah, it's right here. Here, uh, let's zoom in. Enhance. So yeah, you can see here the full work, and it looks like it's going to be a 3x3 three three building, so it's going to be larger than a mill, uh, which is going to be really interesting. You can see the wonder uh, and the castle right here, unique castle skin, uh, kind of par for the course these days. Oops. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. And then uh, for unique text, the poles have two unique texts, obviously. They've got Slakta Privileges and Lekitic Legacy. Both of these provide powerful boosts to their roster of cavalry units. How informative. Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't really give us a whole lot of info, but considering that they have an infantry uh, unique unit, like their main unique unit, I have to imagine that there's going to be some sort of civ bonus and some, you know, good uh, unique text for their cavalry so that they can compete with the other cav civs. Now, something that struck me is that they're focusing more on medium cavalry, which sort of leads me to believe that they're not going to be like a fully upgraded paladin civ. Uh, if they do get paladins, they're probably going to be like missing something like bloodlines or whatever. Uh, maybe like uh, one of the blacksmith upgrades, but we'll see. And I imagine that there's going to be some sort of, like, discount or something like that. Because, yeah, uh, sheer numbers, that sort of leads me to believe, uh, you know, discount. But we'll see. Uh, I, of course, we need to see more information about the polls, but we're kind of getting a better picture as to what they're going to look like. Of course, next we have the Bohemians, a gunpowder and monk civilization. Threatened both militarily and ideologically on nearly all sides, the Bohemians respond with groundbreaking innovations in both spheres. Novel weaponry, battle tactics, and defensive strategies shattered the numerous feudal and professional armies of their invading rivals, while the scholarly thought and debate inaugurated one of the earliest successful social revolutions in early modern European history. Bohemian armies compensated for lack of sheer brute strength with the uncanny ability to outwit, outmaneuver, and counter their opponents. Uh, I think we've seen this screenshot already. Anyway, unique units building is in hex. Uh, we've got the Hussite Wagon. The first Bohemian unique unit is the Hussite Wagon, a deadly forerunner of the modern tank. Hussite wagons possess strong firepower and are, are exceptional at protecting the units positioned behind them. Uh... Now, it's not saying exactly how that's going to work out. Because if there's if it's like a big tanky unit, which, it, you know, it obviously is, at least to some degree, we have to imagine that, okay, you, you have this in the front line, and any sort of units that are behind it are, are already going to be protected. I mean, it's the same thing if you had, like, some more wagons in the front or something like that. Because the way that in Age of Empires units work, or in buildings, is that they'll shoot at the closest unit. So if you have a big tanky unit in front, then everything's going to automatically shoot at it anyway. So we're going to have to see if there's going to be like some sort of unique bonus. But even then, I feel like any sort of bonus in that way of like, you know, protecting units in some way, uh, I feel like it's going to be kind of weird. But we'll have to see how it works out. Um, also, we have to imagine that this is going to be different than the War Wagon. I mean, can't really see uh, too clearly, but... It's probably going to be pretty different. Anyway, their second unique unit is the Hufnis. Uh, yeah, it's a powerful upgrade to the Bombard Cannon. So it's like, uh, my guess is an Imperial Bombard Cannon. So it's like, okay, Bombard Cannons are already insanely good. So we're going to make one that's even better. So already this me leads me to believe that these guys are going to be a really good arena civilization. Just because having like insanely good Bombard Cannons is... Uh, you know, that's that's pretty good. Anyway, they're unique texts. The Bohemians have two unique texts, Wagenberg Tactics and Hussite Reforms. We have uh, the former boosts their roster of gunpowder units, while the latter improves their monks and monasteries. So clearly they're going to be some sort of gunpowder and monk civilization. <laughs> you know, first unique tech, gunpowder. Second unique, unique tech, monks. Now... If it, indeed the uh, the Wagenberg tactics is the Castle Age unique tech, um, I find that interesting because one, it has to be the Hussite wagon has to be a, a gunpowder unit. Otherwise, like why could you get a unique tech that affects gunpowder units in Castle Age when you can't train gunpowder units? So it's going to have to at least affect the Hussite wagon. Um, also, if we're going to have an Imperial Age unique tech that benefits monks and monasteries, 
it's going to need to be really, really powerful because that comes in very, very late. And monks generally aren't super good in late game. So I have to imagine that this is going to be some sort of super strong uh, late game monk tech. So we'll have to see how that pans out. You know, these these are really interesting. I'll be uh, really curious to see how these civs play out. I can't wait to get my hands on them. I can't wait to play these campaigns. Speaking of which, we have these campaigns here. Uh, we've already seen them. I think we've already gone through a lot of this stuff before, so I'm not going to go through that now. Uh, we also have a bunch of achievements. Sure. And uh, that is going to be it. August 10th, guys. It is going to be pretty sick. Oh, yeah. If you uh, pre-order AoE 4, I believe you get the Dawn of the Dukes expansion as a free bonus. So that's something that you can consider if you want to. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Just a... Uh... Oh, hey, surprise! Uh, you know, Dawn of the Dukes is nearly upon us, so we'll have to see about that. And I will see you guys next time.